Happy Halloween. It is October 31st, 2015. Um, glad you're watching. And I'm just glad to be here. Glad I'm doing this. I guess one of the goals... Oh, I suppose I should say this is vlog number two, Douglas John Noble. Um, I don't have names for him yet. Maybe I should start doing that too. I'm still figuring this out as I go. If you hear some background noise, kids running upstairs, my dog freaking out a little bit, it's because um, it's Halloween and there are probably still some kids coming to do a little more trick-or-treating. Um, I am, I think, uh, overdosed on candy at this point. I think I ate more candy tonight than I have since I was a kid going trick-or-treating because we had a lot of candy. I took the kids out, got a little boy and a little girl, five and seven. They had a great time, walked about three miles, got super tired. <laughs> they got They got tired, but it was a really good time. My little boy was a, was a crazy clown, and my little girl was a cat. We got some pictures and did all the stuff. Um, it was a pretty happy uh, Halloween. A lot of fun. So, sorry about the noise in the background. We're just going to have to do it and, uh, and go with it. So, I guess as far as the vlog... One of the reasons I'm doing this is to, you know, have some accountability for myself. So today I want to talk a little bit about um, what I'm working on. I, yesterday I said, you know, every morning I get up, even this morning, Saturday, get up, meditate, do my writing. And what I'm currently working on is a new story. It's a lot different than Satori Sunset. Uh, I guess the premise is basically uh, post-apocalyptic um, <clears throat> in this scenario all of the adults are gone everybody above the age of puberty died all the teenagers all the adults everybody died and uh, my characters are a group of kids and uh, I guess you know they're they're starting over with what they have the knowledge that they have and kind of uh, you know just doing what they have to do because that's the way the world is now I think it's really interesting to explore to kind of explore um, you know what the challenges would be and you know kind of um, get into the mindset of a kid not only like just in their mindset in their mindset but kind of explore like the different lenses that people see the world through and how they build what they know based on those lenses and in a situation like this you know the kids would <clears throat> stop having their lens shaped by the adults around them and the rules and they would start to form their own um, their own lenses based on their experiences and and kind of the different possibilities for how that would play out really interests me uh, I, you know like in the Lord of the Flies for example they got rescued eventually in this scenario as far as they know at this point and maybe it's just the way it is they will never get rescued because all the adults are gone so I, I'm really excited about it. You know, I get up every day and uh, I'm lucky enough to wake up in the morning and get out of bed and just be super stoked to get to the, get to the task. That's one of the things that I think <clears throat> I've learned um, growing up. So I have an English degree. I have a degree in English. I have a degree in marketing. Um, but one thing they never taught you was what it takes to, you know, be successful as a writer. Uh, I always did poetry, um, 
and I just kind of did it when I was hit with inspiration and I waited a long time um, to actually take the initiative to just sit down and do the work. One book that really uh, kind of exp inspired me um, was Do the Work by Stephen Pressfield. You read that book and it's very similar to the, the War of Art, also by Stephen Pressfield. Very good. The War of Art was the first. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And it's a little more detailed. Uh, the Do the Work book is almost an abbreviated version. You can probably you could probably read Do the Work by Stephen Pressfield in it, I, I don't know depending on how fast a reader you are it's it's maybe hundred pages uh, but it, it's a really quick read but it's if you just listen to what he says don't question just listen to what he says and take the advice. It's what you need, as I think any artist, to be honest with you. He's been through the trials. He knows what it takes, and it, it's some really solid advice. Um, I, I guess a little background on me. So I actually grew up in a blue-collar family in a really small town in the middle of Wisconsin. And... Uh, you know, I read books, I started reading when I was 12, 13, but, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a little bit of a chest cold there. Um, but I always thought that books were written by somebody else. You know, I didn't actually think that somebody like me could write a book. To be completely honest with you, in high school, I had a 1.85 grade point average believe it or not, like I, I basically did enough to get by and I used my energy to just do enough. I, you know, played sports and had fun with my friends and that was my main priority. I always thought that I was going to work with my dad at Walker Stainless in New Lisbon, Wisconsin. And I was going to be a welder because that's what my dad did. That's what other people in my family, you know, you work hard and you provide for your family and that's it. But I kind of got into the situation where I was getting up to be to work at six o'clock in the morning and hating myself out of bed at five o'clock every morning. And I would just, yeah, I, I hated it. I did the same thing over and over and at the time like I kind of felt like, like that was my position in the world that's what I was meant to do and I started I don't I don't know exactly what it was but I started just kind of getting into um, to be completely honest <clears throat> the very first poem that I ever wrote I wrote to impress a girl. I watched the Basketball Diaries. This is back in 1995. So I graduated high school in 1995. Um, I watched this movie called The Basketball Diaries with Leonardo DiCaprio. And in that movie, he was a writer, and I had something clicked with me. I mean, I'd started reading. I was a big reader, you know, from the age of 12, 13. Um, like I said, and... I was 18 at the time, I just moved out of the house, and I wrote a poem, to be honest with you, to impress a girl named Tara. She was like the most beautiful woman that I had ever met at that time in my life. I mean, woman, I'm saying like I was 18, she was probably 18. Um, she was actually my roommate's girlfriend, and my girlfriend at the time's best friend. But I had this horrible crush on her. It was crazy. And I wrote this poem, and she actually liked it. Like, And I wrote a couple more. Like, it wasn't to her. Like, it wasn't creepy. Like, it wasn't to her. It was like, I wrote it, and I showed it to her, and she liked it. Like, she complimented, you know, said it was good. And I started writing more, and pretty soon, like, that wasn't why I was writing anymore. Pretty soon, I realized that by writing... 
I could kind of work through some issues that I was going through at the time. Um, I actually have this little notebook called the Little Red Notebook. That's what I call it. Um, I still have it to this day. That I, the very first thing I ever did. It's not. I mean, if I look at it now, um, it's kind of. I mean, real <laughs> teenage angsty, you know, type stuff. Um, maybe I'll do something with it someday, just so that it's harder to lose. I mean, right now, I don't have a copy of it or anything. So if I were to ever lose it somehow, or you know, whatever, I think I'd probably feel like I, I was losing a little bit of part of me. But uh, yeah, looks like we're getting up on the 10 minutes here. Maybe I'll continue this story a little bit tomorrow. Maybe I'll go into a little background of some of the things I've done in my life. Like I say, I mean, I started off as a welder. At this point, I do have, you know, two college degrees, but nobody else in my family did. Like, you know, I had out of, my dad had an 11-kid family, and one person out of his family got a got a college degree it's just not something that was done it was never encouraged but you know it is what it is all right like i say you know this one's getting a little bit long um one thing i want to start doing i'm a i'm a huge quote geek like i i'm a collector of quotes uh, i found this quote this morning uh, i have this it's i guess a, a chrome extension it's called momentum i'll link to it Every day, it gives you like this new picture and a new, um, and a new quote. And today's quote was a Chinese proverb, and it kind of, um, it kind of goes with just getting this thing started, like I'm doing. The Chinese proverb: the best time to plant a tree is twenty. The best time to plant a tree is twenty years ago. The second best time is now. All right. Love you.